There's an old saying, he who breaks a resolution is a weakling, but he who makes one is a fool. I do not believe that. And today, Mr. Toastmaster, fellow members, and honored guests, I'm going to try to convince you that you can and should make resolutions all during the year. Resolutions are just a commitment to make new habits. And if the zeitgeist of our time is change, which I really believe it is, you have to grow, you have to change, you have to build new habits to become the person you really are meant to be. So today I'm going to talk to you about a methodology that I think makes making and keeping a resolution more simple. It helps to build a new habit. New Year's resolutions usually fail because of several reasons. People try to do too many resolutions at once. They try to spread their enthusiasm and motivation over too many changes. Or they take on a change that is so tough that they, don't, they, they can't possibly accomplish it. Sometimes they take on a change right at the beginning of the year on a certain date, and then, you know, life happens. Life gets in the way. They hit a speed bump and they abandon the habit, and they never really get back to it. The final reason, and I think this is one of the biggest reasons, is that resolutions are often vague. I want to quit smoking. I want to lose 20 pounds. I want to do this or that. With no real plan, it's just the outcome. You know, the resolution is just an outcome and not, a, not an actual plan. A little while ago, I, I discovered this blog called Zen Habits, and you can look at it at zenhabits.net. It's a guy named Leo Babuda who talks about making simple changes. And he's come up with this six change methodology. I'd like to propose that you take a look at this methodology if you're trying to ingrain a new habit into your life. The first thing is, you pick six habits for the year that you want to start with, but you focus on just one at a time. So six habits means two months on each habit over the whole year. You commit as publicly as possible to the first habit, the one you're going to focus on for January and February. And that means tell, not just telling people the habit you want to change, but asking for their support. Then you break the habit into eight super, even ridiculously easy steps. For example, if you're really trying to get that into the habit of flossing, the first step might be just pulling out the piece of dental floss at the same time each day. Something really, really easy. The fourth step is to choose a trigger for the habit. A trigger is something that's already in your routine that will immediately precede, say, flossing. So examples are like waking up in the morning, eating breakfast, arriving at the office, arriving home from the office. Those are kind of triggers. They happen pretty much every day. Step number five is to, and I'm going to talk more about triggers in a minute. Step number five is to do the first really easy baby step for one full week. So don't go crazy. Don't try to start flossing. Just pull out the dental floss and piece it down. Don't get ahead of yourself. <laughs> and the final step is each week you move to a new, to the next step. At the end, you'll want to progress faster, but don't let yourself go faster. You're building a new habit. And you repeat these, this each new step for one week for eight weeks until you, the end of the two months comes and you've actually built a new habit. Now a word about triggers. Triggers are key to forming a new habit or breaking an old one. A trigger is an event that kicks off an automatic urge to do a habit. One, if any of you have ever smoked or know people who smoke, You'll know alcohol and sometimes coffee are real triggers. If you have a glass of wine or a drink, you want a cigarette. There's something about the trigger. But this works for positive habits as well, right? A lot of people wake up and go exercise right away. It's just the trigger. I've woken up. It's time to exercise. That's a nice trigger to have. Habits become automatic after we've created a strong bond between them. And it works both positively and negatively. We can try to disassociate the negative bond and associate the positive bond. So I'll give you a couple of examples. Um, when I get up in the morning, I know that it's, it's important for me to exercise first thing, because otherwise it doesn't happen for me. And for a while, I had this really negative trigger, where every morning I was waking up and asking myself the question, 
Should I exercise today? <laughs> now, when you're laying in bed and the snooze button's about this far from your face, what do you think the answer is most days? Suddenly it occurred to me that I just, I need to start with an affirmation or an imperative. I'm going to exercise today. It's going to feel great. So suddenly I can just get up out of bed and get dressed to exercise because I'm not asking myself to make a decision each day. That's sort of, I disassociated with a bad trigger. A positive trigger is my relationship with coffee. I love that first cup of coffee in the morning, and Heather and I prepare really great, great coffee every day. But there were a lot of days when I would say, well, I'm not going to exercise right away. I'll have the coffee first. And of course, that leads to emails, which leads to a few phone calls. And suddenly, there's no time for exercise. So that was happening a lot. And I realized, you know, I can't let coffee control my life. I gotta take back control from this cup of coffee. So now the coffee is a trigger that that follows the exercise. I just get up, do my 30 minutes on the Nordic trap, and that's it. I'm ready for the cup of coffee, and it is much more pleasurable. So the six changes approach helps you to focus on one habit at a time, helps you to implement the changes gradually so you don't run out of steam. It helps you to start out simply so you don't get intimidated. And it helps you stay focused on one thing for two months. So if life gets in the way a little bit, you can just ride it out and get right back to it. If you stick with this method, you'll do much better than you've done in the past with your New Year's resolutions. I'd like to leave you with a Spanish proverb. Habits are at first cobwebs and then cables. So for the year 2010, I wish you all the power to develop one new habit becomes a cable that you're really proud of. Mr. Toastmaster.